the things that we've learned in the past year or two is that we've learned what the risk factors are for it, which is the probably the most prominent one is is being a, a woman is higher is, is about twice the risk of being a man uh, in terms of long COVID. Age is somewhat related to it. The severity of your initial infection is somewhat related to it, although not perfectly. Some people will develop long COVID and their initial infection was quite benign. Uh, the things that you can do to decrease the chance of it include being vac vaccinated, include taking Paxlovid. There's one study that shows taking an anti-diabetes medicine called metformin lowers the probability of long COVID some. The prevalence of it, there's the studies are all over the map, but at least my reading of the studies and analyzing it together would be if you're unvaccinated, your chance of developing symptomatic long COVID, you still have symptoms more than two or three months later, is about one in 10. And if you're vaccinated, it's more like one in 20. So it's not so high that, you, you know, that people should obsess about it, but it's high enough that certainly at a population level, that's a lot of people with long COVID. Probably there are four or five different things that might be going on physiologically, whether it's persistent pieces of virus or your immune system staying uh, over vigilant or your body's immune system attacking itself or a, a uh, or your clotting system getting a little bit out of control. Probably all of those things go on in some in different people, and that makes treatment tricky. There is no treatment that's been demonstrated to be beneficial in it. Lots of things being tried uh, all over the place. And this set of studies that shows long-term consequences are really epidemiologic studies of looking at people who've had COVID and people who haven't, and you see higher rates, and they're good, very well done methodologic studies, most of them out of Washington University, University in St. Louis. Uh, showing higher risk of things like heart attacks and strokes at a magnitude that's not that different than having high blood pressure and not having it treated. So, you know, it's a very complicated entity that we don't understand enough about yet. A lot of money being put into, into researching it and, uh, uh, it, you know, should factor into people's decision-making as they think about, you know, how hard they're going to try to avoid getting COVID.